Welcome to Conversations in a Vintage Shop, a podcast from behind my counter between customers. Join me while I sit behind my retail counter and just have a conversation with you or with myself. While I look out the window, observe what I see, things that are happening in the store today, throughout the week, and just fun little stories that I have from my time as a business owner. This is something that you find interesting, and keep listening, and I appreciate you. Well, hey there, everybody. Happy 2022. Can you believe how fast 2021 went? I tell you, it feels like a week ago, where I was just telling you guys we'll see you in the new year, and here we are. (laughs) Is anyone else having a hard time wrapping around the fact that we're in January, and already... When I am recording this, it is January 13th. Wow. I think most of this episode is going to be just me talking about how crazy fast time has gone. But I'm so happy to be back here with you. And a lot of things have changed in the past month or so since I last uploaded an episode. And the first half of this episode is going to be just a catch up on where I've been, what I've been doing, and just things that have been happening around the shop and in life. So if you want to hear a little bit about what we've been doing behind the scenes and some of the changes we've made, then stay tuned. And we might have a little something else in store at the end of the episode too. All right, so I had to go back to the last episode and refresh myself on where we left off. And in in my recollection, I thought I had left off talking about things that I was getting prepared for in the store for the holiday season. But I guess the last episode left off on myself and my partner Charles talking about a podcast broadcasted from our bathroom on a toilet. So that didn't help much. (laughs) So I'm trying to go back and think what I was doing in the shop when I last uploaded that episode. But where I left off really was getting ready for the holidays and not, again, in retail, not really knowing how this holiday season was going to go. And I mean, that's the boring part. It was straightforward. Nothing crazy happened which I'm happy about. It it was a very non-eventful holiday season, but in a good way. Like we did well, but there was nothing weird or crazy that happened. Um, But this is kind of branching off into what next week's episode is going to be about. And some things that I noticed with customers during the holiday season, but are not just isolated to that. Um, So a sneak peek of next week's episode, it's going to be unpopular opinions in retail. And I have a couple of great little nuggets that I observed in the shop during the holidays. So that'll be interesting. But for the holidays, things went well. It wasn't until the first of the year that things started to really change. And for those of you who don't keep up with me on Facebook or Instagram or my shop on Facebook and Instagram, I took a week long vacation and I had every, every intention of having a vacation, just staying home, maybe getting some projects at home done, resting, um, because I am the only employee at my shop. I'm here six days a week at least, sometimes seven, depending on if I'm doing work for my website. So needless to say, I I really needed a break. However, I did not give myself that. (laughs) I planned a shop revamp for the week that I was off, and I severely underestimated the amount of work it would take to 
redo my shop. And by revamp, I don't mean I did any construction, broke down walls, put in flooring. There were things with my shop that I never got to do when I originally opened at this location. Because a month before I opened, the pandemic hit in the States, well, middle America where I live, and I had to shut down. So my vision for the shop couldn't fully be realized for so many different reasons, you know, only being open for a month until I had to close again, having to pivot to being online again, not really having any money behind me to fall back on. I mean, we all have, we all know how that period went. Whether you're a business owner or not, we all we all know that. So I won't rehash it. But, <laughs> you know, we kind of just wanted to get through that year afterwards. And I made the promise to myself that if after, you know, we could safely reopen, if I could get through that next year, I would really focus on bringing the shop to the point that I had really envisioned it. And I thought, well, perfect. I have this whole week I'm going to be closed It's the first week of January, which in retail is usually pretty slow anyways. And in the Midwest, we've been getting hit with a lot of winter, bad winter weather, blizzards, whatnot. So I thought, well, I might as well just cram whatever I can into this week because I won't get another week off till next year. (laughs) So I did a shop revamp and to help, every day I held a Facebook Live where I gave away a bunch of stuff. And the things I gave away were pieces that were given to me. Maybe I purchased a lot of vintage clothing and there were pieces that just didn't fit with my shop. I've had people dump bins of clothing off for me that aren't vintage. I mean, the whole shebang. So needless to say, my ba- the back room of my shop became kind of a dumping ground for random pieces, fixtures, decor. So I thought, well... I don't want to sit here and nickel and dime and attempt to sell this. So why don't I just give it away for free, which was so much fun, but it was another added level of work that I had added to my pile that week. And it's, it's one of those things where doing it, I knew I needed to just back off. I knew I needed to take at least a day to rest, relax, recover from working nonstop this past year, but I did not. So throughout the week, you know, gave away a bunch of stuff, cleared out my storage. My partner, me and my partner made new fixtures for the shop because that was one thing that really bothered me. And maybe it's my ADHD, maybe it's some kind of OCD, I don't know, but I don't like having a lot of mismatched things in my environment, which is kind of contradictory to say because I own a vintage shop. I specialize in (laughs) one-offs, so nothing is the same. So yeah, this this is where you start understanding how my week was. Things just don't make sense. But the fixtures are really bothering me. They were ones that I got for free when I first started out because fixtures are expensive. That's one thing that they just don't always tell you is that fixtures are very expensive for a mannequin, not even a top quality mannequin, uh, just a regular foam one on a wooden base. You can be spending upwards of 60, 70 dollars just for that. So I accumulated what I could, mismatched pieces, and you know, I made it work. You make it work, you make do with what you have. But there comes a point where you just, things have to change, and the the layout of my shop and how things were had to change. So I had this idea to just make uniform pipe racks. You know, the do-it-yourself pipe racks you see on Pinterest, super simple. Again, a lot cheaper than if you were to buy them online. And we made these wonderful pipe racks with built-in wood shelves. And they're fabulous. I love them. And we spent a fraction of what we would have had we bought them pre-assembled online. But throughout the week, because I didn't give myself a chance to rest and mix that in there, I ran out of my ADHD meds, which those of you who know, know, that's just a beast in itself. I was starting to just really doubt myself. 
And that imposter syndrome really started to sink in. And I thought, the way I was looking at the store was I was seeing everything that was wrong with it. And I'll tell you why that was triggered in a little bit. It's something I don't really talk about very much, but I've become a little bit more empowered to just be open about it because I know I'm not the only one who has these experiences. But I'll circle back. But throughout the week, I was really struggling with not looking at my shop objectively. I was being super critical and nothing was ever right. Nothing looked right. And then I would start to beat myself up about, well, if I had money, if I was wealthy or if I had this or that, then my shop could be everything I wanted it to be. And that's a really bad path to get down. It's a really bad mental space. And on top of it, you know, I was closed for a whole week. That's one whole week of income gone. And I did have some online sales and that's great, but it's that routine that was shattered for me. And with my ADHD, I am a creature of habit and routines. And any little thing that disrupts a routine for me can be catastrophic. So flash forward to the end of the week. I also had the bright idea of going on a buying trip throughout Minnesota. Because again, being the only person that works here, I don't have a lot of time to leave and go on buying trips. So this was my opportunity. Even though I had to fit it in into this week where we were still working on the shop, it wasn't finished yet. And I was opening that Saturday. (laughs) See, I get re-stressed out just talking about it. So we ended up going out of town on this buying trip. We went throughout Minnesota. It was only a day-long trip, but we covered a lot of ground. And on the way back, we ended up getting stuck in a blizzard. And anybody who's traveled around Minnesota, if you're not in the big cities or the suburbs, it's a lot of open space, open areas. And when you get wind and snow, it can become treacherous. Whiteout conditions, slippery roads, we're in semi-country so you get tons of semis and you get the, you know, the snow fog that's kicked up from trucks passing. But in the midst of that trip, we got another phone call that added an extra layer to both myself and my partner's stress that we found out our cat had cancer. And a couple weeks previous, he had just gotten his leg amputated. We had found a large lump that formed on his leg rather quickly. We made the decision to get it amputated. And we knew he more than likely had cancer. And we found out that just to be safe, our vet had called us while we were out of town saying, you guys are going to need to go to the cities for him to get chemo just so we can ensure that this cancer doesn't come back. Which for us is a no-brainer. Even though our cat is diabetic, we we have a lot of worries about how chemo is going to affect him. We want to give him a chance because we love him. And it's a hard decision for any pet parent. But imagine you know, you're, you're going through a blizzard, you're trying to get back home, and you get that call. So it's another added level of stress that, okay, well, in the next two weeks, we're going to be coming back down here again. And you just keep adding all of it on. So what normally would have been, when the blizzard really got bad, a 45-minute drive from where we were back to Fargo, it took us almost three hours to get back home due to the blizzard. But I still needed to get back to the shop to finish it. And when we got back into town, it was after 9 o'clock at night, we went back to the shop around 10 and worked till almost midnight, and we still weren't done. And I had a little bit of a meltdown. I kind of broke down a bit and anybody who's gone through a lot of just mental stress, if you're working nonstop, you don't have a chance to sit and breathe. You bottle it up, you push it down, it comes out. And I hit that point on that Friday, the the day before I was going to reopen, I hit that point and I just broke down. But again, it was going back to me not feeling my shop was good enough. It didn't look the way I envisioned it. But in reality, I didn't have a vision of how I wanted it to look. Which is why it doesn't make sense. It's not logical. It's not rational. 
So that week was a really big eye opener for me on my personal mental and physical health and how I really need to take it a lot more seriously. And my shop won't survive if I don't take care of myself. I would be the reason my shop would close is because I am wearing myself down. And again, people know burnout is real. I even had my accountant tell me that. My accountant was worried about this. <laughs> so it's not a secret to my friends, customers, anybody I work with that I needed a break and I didn't give myself one. And I felt it and I paid the price for that. I, you know, hit really hard. So one of the coping mechanisms I've been trying to adopt, especially when I you know, get these anxiety attacks, my ADHD is just flaring up, is I have to calm myself down in the moment and just breathe and say, you know what? I, I need to go home. I need to go home. I need to sleep. I need to come back the next day in a different mindset. Because as much as I would love to say I'm a good actress, I can't hide when I'm in a bad mood, when I'm sad, when I'm frustrated. You can see it on my face. And I even remember when I worked at a boutique here in downtown Fargo when I was in college. I was a manager and my sister was assistant manager. And when I was feeling it, she would always make the comment, Courtney, do you realize how you look right now? You looked up at that person and it was like you were glaring at them. And I go, no, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. No one can see that. And she goes, no, Courtney, you don't realize how you look to some people. And I took a lot of offense to that at the time. But now, looking back, I go, no, she was absolutely right. In my head, I think people don't care enough to notice if I'm not feeling great. Like, no one cares enough to notice if I'm sad or in a bad mood. Like, no one cares that much about, not even just me or whatever, just... Why would anybody notice? And it's just not true. So in order to make sure my business can keep being what I want it to be and keep being successful, I have to take a step back and really recognize when I'm doing too much. And so that night I went home. I always put on my, it's my old iPod, the iPod I got when I was a senior in high school with my graduation money. And it still works fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. (laughs) But I went home and I just listened to music, which, by the way, Phantom of the Opera is my biggest calm down music, which is odd because it's kind of depressing, but I love it. That's all. I'll I'll die on that hill. (laughs) But I went home and I really just tried to become more cognizant of the mental space I was in and that I can choose to get out of this mindset. I'm not completely trapped by how I'm feeling right now, even though it's really easy to sink in this black hole of your feelings. So the next day I came in, I prepared myself just, you know, what happens today happens. It's a Saturday. It's my first day back after, you know, this revamp. I don't know how people are going to like it. There are so many things I still want to do, but it's, it's, progress. Things get done when they're supposed to get done. And on top of that, our local university, the one I graduated from, North Dakota State University, had their championship down in Frisco, Texas. So I thought, you know, it's probably not even going to be busy today anyways. So why don't I just perfect what I want to perfect, get some projects done. I had no expectations of how that day was going to be. But I changed my attitude. I put myself in a different mindset. And that day I ended up making more than I would have made had I been open that entire week. So here was proof that all my stress and all my worries from that week being closed, whether it be financial or people not liking my store, not liking what I did, it all my customers proved me wrong. And they proved me wrong all the time. So it was a good learning lesson for me. And so that week, I feel like I experienced a lot of things in a short 
time period. (laughs) But then on top of it, we completely changed the entire look and flow of the store. And again, with my ADHD, I love to think that I'm really adaptable to change. I'm not fooling anyone. I'm not even, I'm not fooling myself. It's still taking me a bit to readjust to how the shop looks now because I have my routines. I have things the way I like them. And part of it is OCD. When I was in college and I lived in this tiny little efficiency apartment, I had everything in its place. And when I would have friends over, the moment someone would pick something up and put it somewhere else, I'd be right behind them taking it and putting it back. Or if someone moved something slightly, I'd have to go back and straighten it. So I'm becoming more aware of habits I've had my entire life and becoming aware of how that's affecting my business and my personal life. It was a really interesting week. But the biggest thing that triggered it And this is where I'm going to get a little bit more personal. And I don't tell a lot of people this. And people who know me really, really well or who grew up with me, they're very uh, aware of this issue. But I have a very strained relationship with my dad. And he had a really rough upbringing. And so did me and my sister. But you have that innate need to want to constantly make your parents proud and seek that approval. And I also want to include my dad in things I'm doing. So I had asked him if he would like to help us with my shop revamp, building things, getting things moved around. He had all the power tools and he said he would. So we ended up going to a local hardware store. We needed pipes. We needed wood. And he took over the entire process. And to make a long story short, it was pretty much a battle between myself and my partner and my dad on whose revamp was this? Whose store is this? Whose vision is this? Whose money is this? It's mine. (laughs) And I feel like that was perfectly encapsulated in a moment we had at our hardware store where we needed to cut some wood. So we go back to this public use um, wood shop station at our hardware store. And I wanted to cut the wood myself. I like learning how to do these things. I I love being self-sufficient. I want to do this. But my dad wouldn't let me. He said, well, I've used this before. Like, you don't know what you're doing. So I'm going to do it, even though I'm a 32-year-old adult. I'm I'm not a child. Just because I'm a woman doesn't mean I don't know anything about wood, hardware, power tools. I promise you I do. (laughs) So he wouldn't let me cut any of the wood. He had to do it himself. But then he couldn't figure out how to work the saw. He couldn't understand why it wasn't working. I had asked him, well, can I take a look? Can I try? And he said, no, I'm going to go get one of the male employees to help. And mind you, this woodworking station was across this massive lot outside. It was below zero. It was really cold. And so he trekked across that lot, left myself and my partner. And I thought, well, screw that. I'm going to do this myself. I'm going to figure it out. And lo and behold, I figured out how to work the saw. And I figured out what he was doing wrong. And for anybody who's used one of these wood cutting saws, you have to set it back to zero. And he did not. So when he got back with the male employee, I turned to him and I said, well, I got it working. I figured it out. And he goes, well, how did you do that? And I told him and I looked at him square in the eye. And then I looked at the male employee and I said, apparently women don't know anything. And in that moment, I felt really good. I felt good that I proved him wrong. But The thing is, people like my dad don't like that. That's all they have left. They want to feel like they know things more than you. That's that's the power they have. And I dashed that for him, and I embarrassed him in front of this person he didn't know. And I really paid for it. That entire day, we should have gotten multiple shelves 
finished. But it took almost five, six hours to even remotely put together one of these handmade shelves when it should have just taken maybe 45 minutes, half hour, 45 minutes. But the entire time, my dad was pointing out every single thing in my shop that he didn't like. And one of the biggest things, and it's my biggest insecurity about the shop, are my floors. Because when I moved into this space, it's all subfloor. It looks very industrial. It doesn't look bad. It's not everybody's taste, but I don't have thousands of dollars to spend to get new flooring. And my rental company wasn't going to do it. So I make do and I get area rugs. I do what I can. And my dad had made the comment, how do you get any customers when your floors look this nasty? Geez, don't you even own a mop? Which for anybody who's ever worked with subfloors, especially old ones like in my building, where it's all just kind of splintered plywood, have you ever tried to mop that? It's, you can't. It's not possible. It's hard enough to sweep subfloor. At least the old stuff I have. (laughs) And it got to the point where my partner had to call my dad out and just tell him that he needed to quit it. Like he was being critical of everything. How my shelves were crooked. And I I, I just, like, why even do this? Why are you even doing any of this? If you're not going to do it right, which by right he meant his way, why do it at all? And so it was an entire day, the first day of this revamp, and I was so excited. I was ready. I was finally in the mental headspace where I was ready to make changes. And that was day one. So towards the end of the night, my partner had to leave to go give our diabetic cat his insulin. He's on a very strict schedule. And while the moment my partner left, my dad just sat here with me the entire time, nonstop, ragging and ragging about things in my shop he didn't like. And now I just need to like quit it right now. Like, why? Why, are you even, why do you even keep going? Why would anybody come here? And it was about 20 minutes, a half an hour straight of him just railroading me to the ground about all my faults as a business owner. And I found myself kind of dipping back into that bad habit that I would get where I just dissociate. I look at my phone and I just fall. And at some point, I don't even hear him anymore. I'm so unattached from, it's almost like an out-of-body experience. Those of you who experience that know what I'm talking about. It's, it's like you're not even mentally there anymore because it's a way you can protect yourself. And of course, that made my dad angrier because I wasn't reacting to him. And eventually he left. But that kind of set the tone for me that whole week where I was trying to achieve this standard that my dad had set that is impossible for me to reach, whether it be personally or professionally. And so when you have someone in your life that is setting these impossible expectations, it's a never-ending fight. It's, it's a race that you're never going to win. You're, you're running towards nothing. And the next day I made the decision to just not let him back in here and tell him, no, we're, we're going to do this ourselves. And he had to just dig that knife back in and just keep bringing things up on the phone. Now, mind you, that day that I told him he couldn't come in and help, my partner got one of those shelves put up by himself in under 45 minutes. But it was a really big wake-up call for me that week. A really big wake-up call that, again, nothing is ever going to be fully balanced in life. Your professional life is never going to be fully balanced with your personal. There's always give and take. But you can set those boundaries. And that's the biggest thing I've been working on. Not just in this past week or so that I had been closed, but just in general. Setting a boundary to where when I'm not at the shop, I'm off the clock. 
I'm not responding to emails at 11 o'clock at night. I'm not responding to customer messages at 10 o'clock or 7 o'clock in the morning. That when I have a day off, I have a day off and I don't come in the shop to do projects. But that even goes to the personal. When you have people in your life that are affecting you like that, whether it be customers, friends, family, you have to draw that hard line. And those who don't respect it they're not supposed to be in your life. So that's been life for me since the last episode. Is just reevaluating and restructuring how I see my business. And my business, I'm not my business and my business is not me. We're two separate things. And if I treat my business like I do myself, it's not going to end well. <laughs> so that's something I'm going to be practicing on. But it's also something I just want to spread on to each of you. It's that boundary setting. And giving yourself a break. Not even just having a nap or taking a day off, but cutting yourself some slack. It's been a rough, horrible couple of years for everybody. And I feel like all of us are just still suspended in the air and just grasping at whatever sense of normalcy we can. But even in this environment, we're still trying to achieve the unattainable. And it's hard and it, it's a ripple effect and it affects everybody. But that's something I'm going to continue to work on. And it's just one of those things where if you ever come into my shop... And I'm not my cheery, talkative self. It's not you. I'm human. We're all human. We have our good days and our bad days. In retail, that pendulum swings every other minute, I feel like. <laughs> but it's been an interesting, an interesting month since my last episode. A lot of inner monologue that I've just been playing over and over in my head, which is why it took me so long to even record this episode. Throughout the past few weeks, I've been writing down ideas, but I just never had the motivation to sit down and actually record anything because I felt like I was still too much in the thick of it to actually give context and perspective on everything I had been going through and feeling. And I'm still not quite there yet. I had a really rough therapy session this past Monday. It's Thursday when I'm recording this. And I'm still kind of feeling the effects of that. And again, after going a few days without my ADHD meds because of a prescription issue, oy, everything, when it rains, it pours. So I'm, I'm getting back into it. But starting off the new year, I don't believe in resolutions. I don't believe in promises. I don't believe in any of that. But... I believe in setting goals, setting intentions, and my goal, long-term goal this year, is to keep building up my boundaries with my shop and myself. And I challenge all of you guys to do the same, because I know this is something a lot of us struggle with. And I envy people who can keep that firm line and I, I want to get to that point, and it's possible. It just takes a lot of work. And especially when you're in such a front-facing business where you see people every day, it's hard. It's the people-pleaser in me. I'm, I'm not a no person. I'm a yes person. I say yes to everything even if I really don't want to do it. So that's my challenge to you. But have any of you struggled with this? Is it something you still struggle with to this day? Have you in the past? What has helped you? I know what's helped me is therapy. <laughs> Having an unbiased third party tell me in their professional outside opinion what they think, it's helped a great deal and it's taken the pressure off those around me. I don't like talking about my personal feelings, my mental health struggles, but I know in order for everybody to heal and become more empathetic, we kind of have to let a little bit of vulnerability out. 
and those who take it the wrong way are not meant to be in your life. And that's a boundary. So here's to 2022, the year of boundaries and taking your own life and your choices back and not letting anybody dictate that for you. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I hope at the end of the year, I can, I can have a good update on that, but I'll be giving you updates throughout. It's part of the conversation and it's one I'm going to keep continuing. <laughs> All right, everyone, I'm so excited to be back. And I thank you for sitting down with me for our first episode back in 2022. And I give a, gave a preview for next week's episode on popular opinions. And this is why you should totally be following us on Instagram at Conversations in a Vintage Shop. We put a poll up in our story asking about your unpopular opinions about retail. And to me, retail is retail. doesn't matter whether you're in the fashion industry, grocery industry. I mean, anything like that. Retail is retail. If you provide a customer service, I know you have horror stories and you have those unpopular opinions. So stay tuned. We're getting back on track every Monday, getting these up episodes uploaded. And I'm excited to be back. And hopefully I can get into a more coherent mindset and maybe I'll be less rambly this time around. We'll see. <laughs> Thank you so much again, everyone. And I hope the start of your 2022 is a little less painful than it has been previous New Year's. But I'll see you back here next Monday with unpopular opinions. Bye, everyone. Bye.